Number 31, using the data in Appendix L to calculate equilibrium constants for the following reactions, assume 298.15 Kelvin if no temperature is given. Okay, so we have this balanced equation. We have to find the equilibrium constant of AgCl solid, which will yield Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. Now we're only allowed to use Appendix L values. So when I look into the back of the textbook that gave this problem, Appendix L were all about E cells. So we're only allowed to use cell potentials, that's what E cell values are, of our half reactions. So the first thing was, was that I had to find out what half reactions were used in this equation. Now just know that if you do not see any electrons, meaning E minus in A equation, that means it's a full balanced equation. And since we're dealing with cell potentials, E cells, this is all about oxidation and reduction. You need two half reactions to make one whole balanced equation. So I basically went to the back of Appendix L and I found the two equations that had these similar, either it's a compound or these similar ions. So that's why I picked the AgCl plus the E minus yields Ag plus Cl because that one has the AgCl and the Cl minus. It did not have this Ag plus because that one didn't have a plus sign on it. So I basically had to look for another equation that had the Ag plus. And that was this equation. Here's the Ag plus, right? With the one electron and the Ag. All right. Now I just wrote down what the, you know, the cell potentials were for here. But now we want to find out what the equilibrium constant is. And remember, equilibrium constant is a K value. So you say to yourself, well, how am I going to link a K value with a E cell? And that's this formula down here. Here's your equilibrium constant and here is your cell values, right? Here's your cell potentials. But the thing is, is that I don't have a whole cell potential for the whole equation. I only have it for the partial half reactions. So before I use this formula to solve for the equilibrium constant, the first thing I got to find out is my E cell. And what formula are we going to use? We're going to use this formula. So the E cell equals the cell potential of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. Now there's a couple of different things that we can memorize here, right? Cathode always means reduction. So it's always the reduction half reaction minus the oxidation half reaction. You could remember this by red cat or cat red, right? So reduction goes with the cathode and then anox. So anox and red cat. But now the question is, well, which one of these half reactions is the anode and which one is the cathode? Well, there is kind of a little trick. If you're dealing with half reactions, if you have electrons on the left side of your equation, that means that you're gaining electrons and that's what reduction is all about. But if you have your electrons on the opposite side, that is the, um, that's the anode, that's oxidation. So it seems like here, the two equations are written in terms of the cathode because both of these equations have the electrons on the left side. But one of them has to be the cathode and the other one has to be the anode. Well, this just comes down to matching it up. We want the AgCl on the left side. In the half reaction, is it on the left side? Well, yeah, it is, right? It's not flipped. So if my half reaction is not flipped and I want the AgCl on the left side, I wouldn't have to do anything with this equation. So the bottom one would have to be the cathode. But now remember, when we discussed the Ag plus was the reason why we chose this one, we wanted the Ag plus on the right side of the yield sign. But over here, 
it's on the left. So that's how you get electrons on the other side. You have to flip the equation. This has to be the anode, and it is because you flip the equation. So now we know that the AgCl is the, an, uh, is the cathode, and the Ag plus value is the anode. You do not have to multiply this by any values. Whatever the cell potentials are in that appendix, those are the values that you're going to take. So we can now find out that E cell by just doing the cathode minus the anode. The cathode was 0 0.22233. And I'm going to subtract that by uh, 0 0.7996. Okay. E cell equals 0.22233 minus 0.7996. Looks good to me. Got to go out to the 10 thousandths place. So this would be a negative 0 0.577, I guess, 3. And that's in volts. I'm going to use this answer now to solve for the equilibrium constant. So now I'm going to bring this up. OK. And if I can, maybe I'll just get rid of this line, Whee! just in case I need more room. But now let's see what um, variables I know, right? E cell we just found out. That was the negative 0 0.5773. And now we have four values here. We'll just take it one step at a time. The R value is a constant value for this equation. It's the energy R constant value, the 8.314. T is temperature. That's got to be in Kelvin. And they did say assume 298.15 if there was no temperature given. So this has to be 298.15. The F stands for Faraday's constant. So that's also a constant number, 96,485. If you want to know the units for Faraday, it's coulombs per mole. And now N, for this specific equation, N is the moles of electrons the moles of the electrons that are transferred from the oxidant to the reductant. Now you always go back to your half, your half reactions and you hope that the electrons that are in the half reaction are equal because if they are equal, that means that that's the N value and they're equal here. There was one electron for the AG plus and there was one electron for the AGCL. And that's how many electrons were transferred from one half reaction to the other. So in this case, my N is one. And now we're just solving for that K value. So let's just plug everything in that we can. Negative 0 0.5773 equals, we have that times the LN of K. And then we have, I guess we'll do the four. I hope that's enough room. We will see. This is 8.314. Then the temperature was 298.15. We had one electron that was being transferred. Faraday's constant is 96,485, and we're solving for K. You can label it as X if you want. doesn't matter. The first thing I'm going to do is I'll just simplify this, right, just to get it as one number. So negative 0 0.5773 equals 8.314 times 298.15 divided by 2. No, just kidding, divided by 1. And then I'm going to press divided by again just to show that Faraday's constant is in the denominator. And I get 0 0.025691238, right? I'm not going to round because that's not the final answer. I want to get the K by itself, so I will divide by this crazy number on both sides, 0 0.025691238, 0 0.025693, nope, 1238. So this goes bye-bye. And now I have negative point five. 
773 divided by this value. Okay, another number that I'm not going to round, so maybe I'll just put decimals here. 22.47069, etc., etc. You get the hint, right? This equals the ln of k. Now I just want k by itself. And before I do this, let me just pull this up just so that I have a little bit of room. And the inverse of the natural log, which is ln, is e to the. But if you do that on one side, you got to do it on the other side. This will cancel, and you're now left with k equals. k is just by itself. So the equilibrium constant would be second ln, that's the E button, and I love the TI-84 because I could just go up, pull the whole number down, press enter, and call it a day. Um, with this, I guess we'll do, I guess, I don't know, I guess we'll do four sig figs, right? One point seven four two times ten to the negative tenth. And that is your final answer. That's the equilibrium constant. Not bad. Let's just color this in. A nice cool blue. And then we are done. Okay, what'd you think? Thanks for viewing the video. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Keep studying hard, and I'll be here with you every step of the way with this channel. So go check the channel out. We got tons of videos for you. Also, we have physics and math videos as well. So check it out. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.